Hi everyone, welcome back to another Geocaster video. My name is Zigzag, and it's been a good while since I did any tips video. So I thought today I'd just jump into the map and pass on a couple of tips to you about the toughest continent in Geocaster, which is of course Europe. So I don't actually have a single tip prepared now. Instead, I'm just gonna click on random roads around each country and just find the first tip that comes to mind that I think you might not know. So there should be a good range of things here for every single skill level. Okay, starting off in Norway here, we have snow poles. So as for snow poles, they're most common in the Nordic countries. However, in Finland, the white band is right near the top, whereas in Sweden and Norway, it's kind of further down the orange pole here. On those super rural rounds, that's actually a really useful tip. So just remember that in Finland, it's further up the pole. Moving on to Sweden here for our second tip. Now in Sweden, you can almost always see these short dashes on the outside of the road. That's a very well-known tip. But what's perhaps lesser known is that the reddish road, this kind of red tinge to the road is very, very common in Sweden and quite uncommon elsewhere. So if you're not quite sure what Northern country you're in, if you see a red road, Sweden is the best bet. Now, as for Finland, you almost never see that in the whole country, apart from the Orland Islands here, where I'm pretty sure if I just click the first road, we should see a red road here. And yeah, it is red here. So, FBI, open up! so that really is a great tip to know. Keep that in mind that the Orland Islands will be speaking in Swedish and will often use Swedish infrastructure. A nice tip for region guessing Russia is that often in the Moscow area, you get these really tall trees. I don't know if you can tell, but these trees are probably about five meters or at least three meters taller than what you'd normally see around Russia. And I would say that's around and just north of Moscow and not really anywhere else in the country. Maybe some of the Russia experts can weigh in here, but this is definitely my experience and it's actually quite consistent. Here we are in Estonia, and I have a tip that's a bit of a meme in the GIS community, but is actually nevertheless quite true. And that is that white flowers tend to appear more so in Estonia than any other country in the world, I would say, and definitely more so than its other Baltic neighbors. Now that's not to say you can't see it in Lithuania or Latvia, but it is to say that it is really quite common in Estonia. And if you see them, you should consider it. Probably the most important tip for guessing in Latvia is this particular pole. It's just a wooden pole with hooks coming out, alternating, and that one can be found around Europe, but it is easily most common in Latvia and is definitely in the context of Baltic countries, a really strong tip. One cheeky tip for Lithuania that I feel like only the pros know is that you get a lot of this kind of late winter, early spring coverage. You might have a few green leaves, but very, very wintry looking stuff. And that is found in the west of the country. So it is also east, but clicking west when you see that kind of winterish gen four is a really good idea. One tip for Poland that's an absolute classic but always bears repeating is that the holes in the holy poles do not go down to the bottom or the top. They are actually only just in the middle of the pole. So if you see the holes going all the way into the ground, you're never going to be in Poland. Okay, moving on to Ukraine. That is a country that can often be confused with Russia, especially if you can't move and see the red car, which appears in most, but not all frames. So let's go back to this one. We can't see the red car here at all. If you see the Google car has a long antenna, but it cuts it off and you can't see any of the Google car at all, that is much more common in Ukraine than Russia. Not to say you can't see in Russia, but this particular way of being blurred is much more common in Ukraine. Just like Poland, the best tip for Romania is the Holy Poles. And as you can see, we have holes that go all the way into the ground here. Not to mention that they're also painted white at the bottom here. And that is something on Holy Poles that you mostly find in Romania. And a lot of the times, especially when you're playing no moving, panning or zooming, you can stare down the road and immediately make these out. They're very, very useful. Beyond that, a cheeky little hint is that you have this yellow sticker or yellow paint job quite often appearing on the poles as well. Not exclusive, use it in combination with the flags you see everywhere or something like that. But yeah, definitely most common there. One tip for Bulgaria that I seem to find myself coming back to again and again is the fact that the roads are very pale, but they often have these black splodges on them. As you can see, we actually have quite a few here, just random black splodges. Not really sure what exactly causes that. That is definitely something you see more in Bulgaria, especially if it just kind of looks like this. Also worth mentioning that the little flag on the antenna is more so found in the east of the country. The number one tip I can give you for Serbia is that there's almost never an antenna on the Google car. This makes life super easy most of the time. And then you can combine that with these flat looking B-type guardrails and you're golden. 
Now moving down to North Macedonia, this is the other country that famously has no antenna on the Google car. In Macedonia, you actually never have it. And then also on the guardrails here, they are the rounded style. If you want, you can skip back and look at the Serbia ones to compare, but these ones are rounded, not flat. All around Turkey, you tend to find water tanks on the roofs, but here we are in European Turkey and they're relatively rare over there. So that's actually a really good tip for getting this area. Also, they also have like kind of interesting mosaic roads going on there quite often. So that's quite useful too. One of the metas that still baffles me to this day is the Greek tall pole meta. For some reason, the Greek wooden poles are just much taller than what you'd see elsewhere in Europe. I would say at least an extra two meters tall. So if it just feels kind of tall and you have wooden poles, definitely consider Greece. Albania, like Asian Turkey, is a country that has tons of water tanks on the roofs, and that is really not too common elsewhere in Europe, so that could be a really good tip for guessing Albania. Then classically it's known that they also have the black backs of the signs in Albania. For whatever reason, in Montenegro, it's very common to come across rusted guardrails. Despite it being a country with pretty good infrastructure, for some reason it shows up more than anywhere else I can think of. In the old 2011 coverage, it's very rare to see blue strips on the number plates in Croatia. This is something that I've used countless times to get Croatia over other Balkan countries. It really is the most common there. Watch out for North Macedonia too, where you'll have it, but they normally have a bit of red on the plate. Another thing I noticed on this whole street, basically none of the houses are sealed. They all have this kind of exposed brick. And that's really common in Serbia and Croatia where you pay less taxes on unfinished houses. I think that's the main reason. Hungarian signs are kind of interesting because the actual shield of the sign is kind of smaller and it's a bit taller as well. So once you've played a bit of GeoGuessr, perhaps you can notice this, that the Hungarian sign's just a bit taller. Slovenia is, I believe, in the three most densely forested countries in the world and the most densely forested in Europe. So if you end up finding yourself in a random forest, it is a legitimate tactic to just try Slovenia. When it comes to Europe, in several countries, you can find this bollard with the black cap on top. However, whenever you see this black reflector on it instead of red, that means you're going to be in Austria rather than the other options. The font used on Slovakian signs is significantly more bold than that used in Czechia. So if you do familiarize yourself with the two, you can often use that to differentiate the two countries. Moving on to Czechia, it's a much flatter country than Slovakia. Generally speaking, if you have a flatter round, you should be considering Czechia first. However, what I would say about Czechia is that it's also got a rolling landscape. So in Slovakia, near the capital Bratislava, you can get very flat landscape. But in Czechia, this kind of rolling landscape is much more common in the interior. Also, these orange and black signs that are striped are very common in both countries. As of right now, all the new coverage in Germany has a 2023 copyright date, as you can see right here. So that's really useful if you happen to be in a no moving panning or zooming round. If you see the bollard with the orange ring at the top, you should be somewhere in Denmark. Now Danish bollards don't always have this, but if they do, you're gonna be there. The Netherlands is extremely flat. You already knew that. But seriously, if you're in a round and you don't know where you are, you gotta consider Netherlands. Always be on the lookout for extremely flat rounds being there. In Belgium, it's really common to have a ditch in this style on the side of the road. You would be surprised how often Belgian roads have ditches and the neighboring countries are much less likely to. This is a classic, but it shows up much more often than people realize. This blue sticker on the pole means you have to be in France if you're in Europe. So it's very, very consistent. Definitely use it. Avenues of trees like this are really quite common in Luxembourg. So if you're between Germany and Luxembourg and you're not quite sure and you have an avenue of trees, could be the better option. In Switzerland, it's really quite common to see yellow road markings on the road for like pedestrian crossings or bike lanes. That's something that's not all too common in Europe. So definitely keep an eye out for those if you're unsure. Italy, like France and Croatia, is one of the few countries where you're likely to see shutters on most of the windows. And also something I've noticed about Italy is that most people live in triple or double story houses. That's really quite common to see around the place. San Marino will be a country where it's pretty much always hilly. You're always going to be in the Generation 2 camera with the wide blur at the bottom at this stage. And also they have lots of bollards. Those three things, you should be almost always able to get it. 
These kind of bricks are unmistakably Pyrenees architecture and most of the times you see them you should just be in Andorra, a very easy and simple tip. This tiny little bollard with the grey tip at the top, well that one's only found in Aragon in the northeast of Spain. As you may know, Portuguese plates have a yellow strip on the right side, however if you're in more modern coverage, you're less and less likely to see that because they're phasing it out now. Like France, the UK quite often uses these longer dashes in the centre of the road, which are quite uncommon in other countries in Europe. And you could also differentiate this round from France by these little plastic things that they put between the road lines, which are really only common in English speaking countries. Ireland's a country where they use yellow lines on the outside of the road, normally dashed like you can see up here, and also a country where generation 2 camera is really quite common, whereas generation 3 camera almost never shows up. Finally we have Iceland, which is a country that is very recognisable at this point in time because the only Google car they drove there is this white Google car with the long antenna. So if you're ever not quite sure, turn around, check if you have that car and you should be golden. So I believe I've covered every country. If there's a country I missed, give a tip for that country in the comments. Otherwise, give the video a like and tell me what continent you'd like me to do next. Guys, thank you very much for watching the video to the end and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.